Welcome to the Roddy's Kitchen. Today we are going to make Cheddar Serrano smoked sausages. We made a couple different sizes, a couple different shapes, and we're going to get to it. For today's recipe, we are going to use natural hog casings. These are from the Syracuse Casing Company, and these are a 38 to 42 millimeter. Once you estimate the amount of casing you're going to use, go ahead and throw them in a separate bowl and rinse them. All different brands that you could uh, purchase have different instructions, so make sure to read the instructions for the purchase, the casings that you purchase. Once you're done, if you still have leftovers, you can go ahead and throw them in a colander and coat them good in kosher salt and let them drain for about an hour. And then after that, you can throw them in a Ziploc bag, coat them in kosher salt, store, stick them in the back of your refrigerator and they'll last for quite a long time. Uh, just do not put them in the freezer. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna start cutting up all this nice pork butt. You uh, probably don't wanna do is start off with a batch as big as I'm doing here. This is gonna be 52 pounds. But depending on the grinder that you have and the size of the throat on the grinder is how you need to chop up your meat. That way it'll feed through the grinder in, a, in good fashion and you're not trying to force it and stuff it and get it stuffed up, bound, bound up in the uh, grinder. There's Roddy's in the Roddy kitchen. Okay, as you can see, I've cut up the 52 pounds of pork butt. Again, you want to cut it up so it's the a good size that fits through the throat on whichever kind of grinder you have and obviously you don't really need to do this much to start off with but I'm going to make a good batch vacuum seal it throw it in the freezer so we have it when you're cutting all this up it's good to keep it as cold as possible this is you can tell what while I'm cutting while I was cutting it up that it's partially frozen which can be a little hard to cut through sometimes, so just take it easy. Be nice and uh, careful of your fingers. And as you can see, I did it all with this French, basically French chef knife. If you want to go a little extra mile, you can step up and get you a, this is a Dexter Russell slicer knife that makes life a little bit easier. And they're only like 20 some bucks. Uh, always, of course, working with raw meats and any of your foods, try to keep things nice and neat and clean and not splashing all over the place. Uh, there was a couple sections there you saw I, I caught a bone. There was a little piece of bone left in there. Cut that out. If you see any kind of gland or big valve looking pieces, you can cut those out because they don't really make uh, good pieces to bite down on in your sausage. So next, throw this back in the freezer. Let it cool up for a little bit. 
Okay, now I'm going to measure out all my ingredients. We have cure number one, sometimes also called the pink salt, hence the pink. Uh, what this is really useful for is when you're going to smoke or have things that sit in, in the danger zone temperature wise for your meat so that the bacteria, bad bacteria don't get in there and start causing botulism or forming botulism and all that good stuff. If you're not going to smoke and you're just going to make sausage, stick it right in the fridge, cook it up like a bratwurst or any of them. For this one, for example, this is going to be a jalapeno cheese or I should say Serrano cheese, actually. Uh, you can just stick them right in the fridge, cook them like you would bratwurst or anything else you buy out of the grocery stores. You don't have to smoke it. If you're going to smoke it, it's a good idea to use the cure. That way you're not running into a problem with botulism. Next, we've got some mustard seed, garlic powder, kosher salt. You need to be really careful with what kind of salt you use. Get in the habit of using the same kind of salt all the time. Uh, I use Morton's because that is in the area that I live and have moved around. I always find Morton's kosher salt. A lot of people use diamond kosher salt. The flake sizes are different, and that will cause your measurements to go, you know, too salty, not salty enough. So be cautious of what kind of salt you're using. Paprika, you can use whatever your taste prefer. I like smoked. If I want more spice, there's I've got chipotle. There's a Hungarian Hungarian hot. You can use whatever type you like, except for regular old plain paprika. That's pretty much just red coloring, tastes like dirt. And black pepper. We're gonna grind here with our mustard seed and heavy cream powder. This helps to act as a binder in the sausage, hold everything together when, when we get to the mixing stage. And then heavy cream also to help bring in uh, some liquid and bind things together. We also have serranos. You can slice them, take all the seeds out. If you want to remove some of the heat, you can use jalapenos. You can use hatched chili peppers. You can leave them out if you don't want any hot pepper at all. And then we have cheddar cheese. Now, most all of the dry seasonings, except for obviously like Anthony's and a couple of these others, you can, but like pure bulk seasonings like this, you can get from Butcher Packer. They are a great company that's actually in Michigan and have very good prices. This is called a high temp cheddar cheese. They've got different types of cheese. They've got a ghost pepper, they have mozzarella, all the different types of cheese and the high temperature, the way it's processed, uh, helps to reduce it melting out so you don't have little open pockets of where the cheese has melted out when you take a bite out of your sausage. You can use regular cheese if you're making a small batch, especially if you're not gonna be smoking it and you're just gonna use it like fresh sausage. That works good too if that's all you have. Uh, also, you can, you know, we're gonna, you have to adapt your seasonings depending on how much meat you have. So it's always gonna be a, a little bit different. And it's really, it's not as Im empirical that you get everything exactly correct when you're doing most all the recipes I'm gonna doing. It's just, this is not like a baking bread where it's like a little bit of science and magic. Uh, the one thing you really want to be careful on is if you are making sausages that require cures because you do want to get that measurement correct so you're not, again, running into bad, bad bacteria problems. So I'm just going to mix up my seasonings, get them all measured out while my meat is freezing up and we get ready to grind.
Next up, grinding. Okay, so just to show you what I have here, this is a Weston number 22 grinder. Uh, it's a pretty good sized beast, as you can see. The auger. We've got a coarse blade. You want to always be, or excuse me, coarse plate and the blade. You always want to make sure that you're careful with your blade and plate that they're on the same face because as they, as you rotate and cut, they kind of grow into each other. And if you look carefully at the uh, plates, you can see where the wear spots are. So when you take them apart, wash them, and then I'm not sure if you can tell, but this has a little bit of a oil, food safe oil base on it so that when it's after I've washed it and put it away, it doesn't get uh, rusty or do any of that kind of good stuff. Of course, it's pretty much all stainless steel anyways, but you want to make sure when you're putting it back together, you put it in the right direction. <clears throat> Blade goes on. Coarse plate for this sausage. And then you're... Cover screen. Also, you want to be careful. You have a tray to work off of so you can have some meat sitting up here, staging while you're pushing it down the throat. Thankfully, this one here, uh, depending on the size of the grinder, they all have different sized throats. Always want to be careful. You don't want to be working here trying to stick, you know, I still have a few inches, can't get to my fingers, but you never want to test that theory so <clears throat> you've got a switch back here on the back there is a forward and reverse this model has forward just keeps on going reverse if it starts to get bound up is a little is a temporary on off just to get it to back up a little and unstuck whatever piece got stuck and then this screw just holds this whole auger on Auger head, excuse me. <clears throat> if you've retrieved your meat out of the freezer, if you've let it sit a long time, and this has turned into one big block, that's going to be quite difficult to work with. Also, some people like to wear gloves. You can get little insulated gloves with a latex or rubber glove over it because it gets quite cold on your fingers. We're going to grind working into this empty, uh, empty lug. These are 50 pound meat lugs. <coughs> which I also got from Butcher Packer. Okay, we're going to grind into the bowl. Since the lug does not directly fit under my other head. All right, here we go. Okay, that's about halfway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start throwing in Serrano's. I'm going to grind them whole. We uh, did remove the stem off the end, but we are leaving the seeds. We're just going to blend them in with the rest of the mix. As we go along, grinding up the rest of the sausage or grinding up the rest of the pork. 
doesn't matter if your peppers are fro frozen or raw. Uh, you can do them either way. Just so happens the last time we made sausage, we had a bunch left over, so we stuck them in the freezer. This time we're using frozen and really no degradation. It's not going to hurt it any. All right, so now that we're finished grinding, cleaned out my other bin because I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix all my seasonings in and I'm doing it by hand because I have not uh, bothered to get a mixing machine yet. If you're going to do, you know, 5 pound, 10 pound, 20 pound, obviously this is a little bigger than that, but you can still do it by hand. Uh, <clears throat> It's just another step in the process. Some of you might have KitchenAid mixers, not the big Monster Weston or, you know, any, uh, any of the other ones out there. But, you know, a long time ago, I had a KitchenAid with the meat grinder and stuffer attachment. That's great for doing five, 10 pound batches. But when you start doing bigger batches, it helps to step up to the bigger dedicated equipment. So uh, I have this. Stuffer over here, stuffing with the grinder is, uh, works again, good for small batches, but gets a bit laborious. Uh, it takes longer, your meat starts getting warm and the grinder starts getting warmer because that's really not its intended purpose. You can do it for small batches, but same with the mixer. Mixer really helps because one of the problems when you have ground meat like this, would be great for doing hamburgers but when you're doing sausage you want to have a little more cohesive mix if you were to just stuff this in casings basically when you cook it it's just going to crumble apart on you and so what i will show you is as we're mixing in our ingredients we're just going to mix and mix and mix and it's going to start releasing some of the proteins and we're going to have the heavy cream also added as a binder which is going to help emulsify. Now we're not going to go to emulsification like a hot dog, but you'll start to see where if I make a patty and you know it's not just crumbling and falling apart, it's like a sticky glob. So let's get the mixing. And we will do all the dry first, and then we'll add in the heavy cream, and then we will add in the cheese uh, last because we don't want to crush up the cheese cubes and make them too mush. Okay, now that I've reached a point probably about three quarters of the way done, just gonna throw go ahead and throw in the diced high temp cheddar cheese. Always throw this in at the end because I want the dice to stay pretty much how it is. I don't want to crush it up, and make it any smaller.
Okay, now that we are all mixed up, as you can see, 50 pounds is quite a bear to tackle at once, especially without a, a mixing machine. Again, you would think adding all that liquid would make things worse. Look at that nice conglomerated mix. And now it's time to stuff. I was wondering which way is going to work better, right handed or left handed. Guess I'm going to do it right handed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fry up a couple little test patties to try this out before we start casing. Got my cast iron heated up back here. As you can see, barely in there, well, the high temp cheese has held up to the temperature of frying in the cast iron on high and didn't just melt out and leave empty holes in there. And this tastes really yummy. So, now that I've got all this casing wrapped up on here, Okay, so yeah, I have that open, so I'll make sure the sausage is coming out to the end of the tube. I'm going to go ahead and throw a knot in it. And I am not the fastest nor best at doing this process. You just have to carefully try to get the feel for holding tension on the casing and pushing with the stuffer. You want your tubes, your casings to be nice and full, but try not to burst them. And also, as you notice, you want to be careful because if you have pressure on this and you let go, it will swing back because it's under pressure pushing down the sausage and wacky right upside the chin. It doesn't care.
leafing footlongs. Now, depending on how big you want to make your sausage, you could make six inch links and twist them off, or you could make longer kielbasa style links, or you could just make a long roll. I'm going to go ahead and link them as I go because it's going to take a little longer, but it's going to give me a little more control on getting bubbles and trying to get them as plump as I can without bursting them. Take some practice. I'm by no means a pro at it. Pull off a little more casing. Make sure your stuffing is out at the end. Tie you another knot. Start off again. What are you doing? I'm almost done. Yes, I'm almost done. This is like the last link. Maybe one more. Somebody's getting impatient for dinner. Okay, yes, a couple hours later, and I am almost done. We we're just about at the bottom. Yes, going through all this hassle can be a little bit of a learning curve, but just like everything else, practice makes perfect. I highly recommend you don't do some crazy 50-pound batch to start off with, and if you don't have a mixer, 50 pounds is quite a lot. I've done it a couple times, so I'm pretty confident with, yes, it's just going to be a pain nice and slow and easy and I'll get there until I purchase a mixer anyways if you were going to do it I would highly suggest you just break it up and I want it all the same flavor maybe you don't want maybe you want to try some different flavors do you know 10 of this 10 of that and that's going to be the end of it I'm not even going to finish that one that'll just go to patty and if you don't even want to bother with stuffing you can just Make hamburger patties. That's what I did. I still have a whole bunch of done in hamburger patties. In fact, I'm going to do another video out with some beef and just do hamburger in the food processor if you don't have a grinder and a stuffer because it's still better to grind your own meat, especially with all the food warnings these days. They all pretty much revolve around the any bacteria. If you don't have clean surfaces, any like anything like that, gets right into the middle of the meat middle of the product as opposed to you know a steak when you cook it your the outsides you're killing whatever's on the outside surface usually salmonella things like that don't get down into the base of the meat that's why as you can see you can do it a few different ways if you want to do a big roll you can do a roll like this and then you can go ahead and link it up afterwards you can make smaller you can make a little larger i even made some that are about you know eight ten inches so you can make them out whatever size you want fit your portions and go from there now we're going to rack some of these up and head out to a smoker All right, so as you can see, we've made a few different sizes. We cooked up a couple of these. We still have a bunch out on the smokers. I ended up using both smokers. 
And really, we're just going to smoke them up till they're about an internal temperature of 150 degrees. And then you can, we're going to vacuum seal them all up, store them in the freezer, and then you can just whip a couple out anytime you want to finish heating them off till about 165, 170. And chow down. So we're going to try a couple of these. Two of these I grilled up in the, well, one out on the grill, two in the cast iron pan. There's your nice, yummy, high temp cheddar cheese still sitting there. Took the abuse of the smoker and the cast iron. Here come my taste testers. I hear them. What do you think? Nice spice. You can, you can adjust the peppers and do how you like. Uh, these were full Serrano peppers. We just removed the stem off the end. Mm, yeah. Okay, we don't want, that's about good for you guys. All right, go on. Out of the kitchen. Come back next time. Go on. All right, well, with that, if you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'm going to go finish dinner. <laughs>